Hello viewers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. As you all know that our earth is comprised of different size of the plates. So these plates are being, you know, moving in all directions. So once they are being moving into different directions, so they not only brings changes internally, but at the same time they are being, uh, you know, creating lots of landforms or changes on the surface of earth. So. Uh, so because of the movements of uh, these uh, these plates uh, the internal energy the energy which is being inside the surface of earth inside or beneath or below the below the earth try to come out at the surface of earth so uh, so these plates they are playing very important role not only in the shaping of the earth surface or bringing the changes inside and outside the surface of earth but at the same time they bring the material which is being which is being below the earth, earth surface so because of that that uh, plates movements the energy which was inside or the material which was inside the surface of earth it comes at surface of earth uh, and also bring lots of changes so today we'll discuss about those you know forces or those energies which are being coming at the surface of earth and they bring lots of changes so one of them is the earthquakes so so in today's lecture we'll discuss about the earthquakes not only we we'll discuss the how earthquakes are being generated or formed but how what are the original place or origin or occurring of the earthquakes at the same time we also discuss the types and the global distribution of the earthquakes so where the earthquakes are mostly are being occurring and what are the particular condition which push our uh, you know uh, generate the these seismic wave so stay tuned with me so this lecture is going to be very interesting because uh, in this not only we understand what is the internal composition of of the earth but at the same time we will learn that why the the uh, earth uh, inside earth you know uh, the what is say heat or the material try to come in surface of earth and what is the difference between the internal structure of the earth and the outer or the surface of the earth so earthquakes are always been very important it has a lots of interest on the part of the people because these are those geological phenomena uh, which we 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 not only see that uh, they are been happening so quick but at the same time they are destroying or they are being bringing lots of disaster surface so, so because of these earthquakes lots of changes occurs and it's quickly it quickly changed the whole scenario or you know topography of that earth crust so uh, let's go into the detail of this lecture and i will say you will have to stay with me so uh, the an earthquake an earthquake is the is is a sudden vibration or the shaking on earth due to the movement or, or the passage of a seismic wave so what is earthquake earthquake is a sudden very sudden shaking trembling or movement of earth because of the seismic wave so as i told you our earth our, our earth is being based on the different plates so once these plates are been moving they what are the they are being sometimes they are been coming closer to each other sometime they are been passing each other and sometime they are being colliding each other so because of the movement of these plates the seismic waves are generated and seismic wave generate and seismic waves produce the earthquake so seismic waves are produced when some form of energy stored in earth crust is suddenly released usually when masses of rock pulls against one another suddenly fracture and slip most earthquakes are produced along faults tectonic plates boundary zones or along the mid oceanic grains so what happens so you can see here this is the smooth surface of uh, either the inside or the outside the surface of earth so see, you you can see what happens once the trembling or shaking starts or once these uh, these plates start to move and they generate seismic waves so they take the shape of uh, this in this way so it start to tremble so what has been said here that mostly earthquakes are uh, happens or originate where there is a weak line where there is a fault line or where the corner of the plate so i'll show you in the coming uh, in the coming slides uh, 
that the how these plates when are been moving so mostly what has been said jahan jahan pe wo jo plates boundaries hain jo plates movement jo plates borders jo corners hain wo it has been consider weakest point weakest spots so wahan se kya hota hai ke dead energy which is inside the surface of its try to come in the surface of earth now we'll see the you know myths and legends of regarding the earthquakes then i'll come on the scientific uh, you know the dis uh, description or uh, of, about the earthquake so in ancient times earthquakes were thought to be caused by restless giant creature slumbering beneath the beneath the earth uh, it is said that there was certain forces gigantic forces which were inside the earth and they were in a peaceful uh, or you know so in a rest uh, in a rest uh, what is a environment in a rest condition means they were they were in a sleeping position so once they start to disturb and they they came out or they start to shake so because of that you know because of that our earth our, our earth start to tremble or the shake aur ye kya keh raha hai ki zameen ke andar koi aise devta the aise forces the wo hamesha they were in sleeping position to jab wo disturb hue wo uthe to us wajah se zameen bhi ghumna shuru ho gayi ya zameen mein shaking shuru ho gaye so in in greek methodology a poisdian Poisdian is the god of sea and is usually depicted uh, carrying a trident. Uh, one of the Poseidon nickname is Earthquaker. So you can see here, this is the image of uh, Poseidon. Poseidon, and, and he has a some sort of you know device which is called trident. Trident has a three uh, arrowed, you know, uh, and it is said that Poseidon had had been striking ground with this trident, which trigger shaking. in the earth so this uh, poison which has been called the god or of the sea so once he was you know just throwing his trident and the device on the surface of earth then the our earth start to shake or move or tremble so at that time so that was you know the myth that is saying and he, this person was called the earth shaker it was myth method it was a myth in a, in the greek methodology so while the early greek philosopher developed a theory that earthquakes were caused by movements of gases trying to escape from the beneath the ground uh, then we had a earth greek philosopher ab unhone kya kaha unhone kaha ke why the earth start to shake because the gases which were inside the surface of earth they try to comes at the surface of earth jo zameen ke niche gases thi wo upar aane ki koshish karti hai तो उनकी वजह से जमीन में मूवमेंट पैदा होती है अब बट अब अंटिल द एटीन सेंचुरी वेस्टर्न साइंटिस्ट इंक्लूडिंग आइजक न्यूटन थॉट्स दे वर कॉज बाई एक्सप्लोजन ऑफ फ्लेमेबल मटीरियल डीप अंडरग्राउंड तो इसने क्या कहा इन्हें कहा कि एटीन सेंचुरी में वेस्टर्न साइंस ने कहा कि जमीन के अंदर एक uh, यानी कि एक ऐसी फोर्सेस हैं uh, जिनमें जलाव ज्यादा है दे फ्लेमेबल यू नो दे कैन गेट the fire quickly flammable and they have explosive material so that is uh, explosive must start to burst to jab wo burst hona shuru karta hai to is wajah se zameen mein shaking shuru hoti hai so in 1976 the river john michel proposed that earthquakes were caused by rock movements and related shaking to the propagation of plastic wave within the earth crust so uh, this guy in 1976 he said that michael michel that that the Uh, that the what is that that the these earth rocks because our our earth is based on the rocks so these rocks start to move so because of that movements of the rocks the waves or the seismic waves or the sound start to generate and because of generation of the dead sounds you know the earthquakes occur so these are these were the you know the, uh, some myths regarding the earthquakes now we are coming to the scientific background so you can see here what causes the earthquakes so one of the popular or biggest reason is the plate boundary so the earth as you all know earth has a four major layers the crust uh, the upper mantle lower mantle and the core so these are the four uh, layers of the earth the crust is the upper mantle makes of the thin layer on the surface of our planet which called the lithosphere so upper most part which is based on the crust and the upper mantle It, when we combine both, combine it, it make the lithosphere. ये lithosphere को बनाता है. तो lithosphere में क्या है? We have a we have a crust and upper mantle. But this thin layer is not all in one piece, but it is made of many pieces like puzzles, 
covering the surface of earth so these puzzle pieces keep slowly moving around sliding past one in each other and striking to each other so what is being said that this lithosphere is not uniform everywhere or it is it not look like is a one is the same as a uniform but it is based on the different pieces so once we start to combine those pieces it give to a shape a one shape like a you know one piece of the lead so so that pieces are those pieces of lithosphere are being covered or comprised by the by the plates so these puzzle pieces of tectonics and edges of plates are called the plate boundaries so you can see here this is the you know uh, different you know plates and you say the different plates they are covering the different parts of the earth so you can see easily the edges or the corners or the boundaries of these plates so these plates uh, start to move sometimes they come closer to each other sometimes they are been running away from each other sometimes they are been crossing each other so because of these movements uh, this type of you know you know geological process or geological uh, you know things happen one of them is the earthquake so the plate boundaries are made of many folds and most of earthquake around the world occur in these folds so so these are the fault lines you can say where the uh, where the uh, the corners or the borders of other plates are moving together so if if there are the two plates one this is this is another plates so this corner uh, meeting point of both uh, plates it's a it's a weakest point we call this a fault so this is a fault line which produce the earthquakes because the earth energy wants to come out of the surface from through these passages how we measure the earthquakes so the point at which an earthquake actually origin or begins in a deep inside the earth below is called the focus or the hypocenter so a uh, hypo hypocenter or focus the place where our earth could generate or start so this is a starting point especially at below the surface of earth zameen ke niche jahan earth quick start hoti hai is the origin place of earth we call this the focus or the hypo center while the point directly above the focus or on the surface is called the epicenter so this is the point where where earth quicks generate or start and this is the point above directly above the surface we call the epicenter so this is the focus where the earthquake actually occurs and the epicenter where it is being happening or occurring in the surface of earth so we call that the epicenter the impact of earthquake are usually more significant epicenter than the focus the most impact has been observed at the epicenter than the focus because if the earthquakes are happening inside the earth deep inside earth uh, it's not going to you know destroy or bring disaster but when it's been happening at the epicenter at the surface of earth definitely is is you know bring lots of you know disaster lots of things are going to be so yahan pe kya zaruri hai ki epicenter wahan pe jo earth ko ka impact hai sabse zyada zahir hota hai kyunki the epicenter where not only we have a human you know settlements at the same time we have also human possessions or property so earthquakes you know destroy everything <clears throat> now we are coming to the types of seismic waves i told you the earthquakes occur because of the seismic wave so earthquakes are form of wave energy that has been released through the bedrock the seismic energy is travel in all direction as you know the two different types of seismic waves have been described by geologists so there are two types of the earthquake waves or seismic wave one are the body waves and other are the surface waves surface wave which are been you know happening are been occurring are moving in the near uh, surface of earth or near the surface surface or subsurface then we have a body waves body waves which are deep inside or below uh, inside the surface of earth so both these waves produce sharp jolt uh, jolt or shaking p waves or primary waves are formed by the alternate expansion and contraction of bed bedrock and cause the volume of material they travel through to change p waves travel at a speed of 5 to 7 km per second through the lithosphere so p waves are primary wave which are being considered the what are the body waves they travel 5 to 7 km 5 to 7 km per second so can you you can imagine from that how they are so fast p waves travel is uh, so in about 8 km per second in the asthenosphere the speed 
found is about 0.30 km per second. P waves also have an ability to travel through solid, liquid, and gaseous material. So if you compare uh, the all three uh, waves, which are being divided in, in two classes, uh, you know, P waves, S waves, and the L waves. So these waves, uh, they have a different nation, a different nature, different characteristic. But the P waves, which has a speed of five to seven kilometer per second, has an ability to move through all sort of material, all sort of, you know, things. So, so like whether it is a solid, whether it's a liquid, whether the gaseous. So if it's solid, hai, gaseous, hai, liquid material, whatever it is, it can easily travel through. S waves, because you know, our earth, internal structure of earth is being, uh, you know, made of different material. So we have a gaseous material, we have also solid material, at the same time we have also liquid material. So S waves or which is called secondary waves are second type of body waves. These waves are slower than the P waves and can only move through the solid material. So what is different between P waves and S waves? S waves, they just pass through the solid material so they don't have they don't have an ability or capability to pass through or go through the uh, rest of the like the gaseous and the liquid material so s waves are produced by shear stress and move material they pass through in a perpendicular up and down so they they so these especially waves they move or push the material up and down something like this you know and sideways direction surface wave travel at or near the surface earth so these are those waves which are being traveling either the surface or near the surface subsurface surface or the subsurface so these waves produce a rolling or swelling motion causing the earth surface to behave like waves on the ocean so ye kya karti hai? it it make the earth materials similar like the you know waves which are being produced on on, on the on the ocean so sort of ocean surface so just uh, uh, some under company it start to move and uh, give get the shape of the waves similar you know surface web thing oh was a mean goes to record it so now the velocity of these waves is slower than body waves despite their slow speed these waves are particularly destructive to human construction because they cause considerable ground movement so what has been said now the surface wave they are slower than the P waves and uh, S waves, but surface waves, they bring more destruction because they are being at the surface, near the surface. Because all the things are in the surface. We are being living there, so there are the loss of human beings. At the same time, there's a loss of properties. So the S waves, they are so important in the earthquakes because they are being moving at the surface of Earth. Now, surface wave, waves are slower than the P waves and the S waves. So how we measure the earthquakes uh, the strength of earthquakes can be measured by the device called seismograph you can see here so seismograph it record uh, uh, not only the size or strength or magnitude of the earthquake so when an earthquake occurs this device convert the waves energy is into a standard unit of measures uh, measurement like a rector scale so a rector scale Usko, uske bunyad pe wo kaam karta hai. They start to, once the uh, waves start or shaking starts, so that energy convert into the unit. So the rector scale is a logarithm, thus each unit increase the mag magnitude depending 10 times more energy release. So you can see here, so this is a device is being, when there's a, if there is a more and more shaking or trembling, it convert that trembling in the, in the form of waves uh, on the please. Uh, on the paper so you can see this is a seismograph through which we measure the earthquake so this is a rector scale rector scale start from 1 to 10 and you know from low to high you can say and you can understand that why we call the low or high or intense or you know mild or you can say intense or you low earthquake so low mild or intense earthquakes are being you know classified on the basis of the rector scale so two point something is smallest earthquake detectable by the people people can easily detect them five is the energy released by hiroshima atom bomb is a similar like energy five if you if you if, you, if you, somebody asks you uh, the earthquake which is a five uh, in a rector scale so wo isi tarah jaise jitna jitni energy hiroshima or nagasaki pe jo bomb giraya tha us pe so six 
or to seven about 120 shallow earth of this magnitude occur each year on the earth uh, so you can see here so this is uh, after seven so these all are the deadliest earthquakes you know they are so a dangerous earthquake so you can see here the lots of earthquakes are occurring one thing is that that earthquakes are being regularly occurring even when i have been delivering lecture to you when we are when i have been talking to you there might be lots of earthquakes are being going on inside the surface of earth but we consider earthquakes when it's been breached the surface of earth wo jab zameen pe pahunchti hai tab usko earthquake kehte hain warna there is regular earthquakes uh, there are hundreds and thousands of earthquakes regularly happening uh, every day below the surface of earth inside deep the earth surface because we can't feel them they don't bring any change or you can say uh, which we we can see them or you can say we can feel them so that's why we don't consider them now we come to the global distribution of earthquake we'll see where these earthquakes are being happening now now i'll say it can be happen everywhere any part of the world but there are certain parts of the world where earthquakes are being occurring frequently so it's very important in geography to so see that the distribution that where where those earthquakes are being occurring and what is the reason of earthquake occurring so major earthquakes occur mainly belts coinciding with the margin of tectonic plates as i told you where there is a margins you know the corners of plates so mostly earthquakes are being happening or occurring in those part of the earth so the most important earthquake belt is the circumpacific belt which affects many populated coastal regions around the pacific ocean for example those of new zealand new guinea japan aleutian island alaska and the western coast of north and south america so this is called the circumpacific belt mostly happening in the coastal areas of these so i'll i'll show you where it's happening it is estimated that 80 percent of energy presently released in the earth comes from these whose epicenter are this this belt. so the seismic and uh, the seismic activity is by no means uniform throughout the belt there are number of branches of various points because at many places the circumpacific belt is associated with the volcanic activity so it has been popularly dubbed the pacific ring of fire so now what is being 80 percent 80 percent of earthquakes and volcanoes are being happening in this part of the world which we call pacific ring of fire earthquakes and volcano, volcanoes are almost similar activity but they, they occur in different way and the occurrence or original original place or origin of both are the same so duniya mein 80 faisad jo zalzale aur volcanic activities ya volcanoes aate hain wo yahan pe aate hain so is jagah ko hum kehte hain pacific ring of fire so it covers australia then we have a japan and you can see the north america and south africa mostly it happens as the coastal areas of uh, these places so this is the you know the major epicenter of the earthquakes where 80 percent of earthquakes are being occurring now comes the second part a second belt is called alpide belt passes through the mediterranean region eastward through asia and joins the circum belt in east indies so, so this is the second belt of of uh, you know of the world where mostly earthquakes are being happening so you can see there's a south asia so pa indian pakistan or chinese himalayan belt also comes in this way the term alpide belt referred to a geographic area located in the southern region of eurasia this area is prone to earth activity is and, and is recorded having the second highest rate of seismic activity in the world in fact the alpine belt accounts for 15 percent of earthquakes occurs worldwide the pacific ring of fire covering 80 percent of earthquakes 15 percent of earthquakes occurs in this part of the world so additionally the alpine belt is categorized as an uh, organic zone which means it was created result of tectonic plates pushing into each other and lifting the earth crust upward so you can see here it has also been said these himalayan and alep Al 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 uh, you know mountains ranges are being you know uh, these are the production of the uh, plate tectonics so because of these plate tectonics movements of these plates these gigantic or big himalayan in type of uh, mountains being produced so due to this uh, geological activity the alpine belt is home to number of mountainous ranges the zone is stretched as far west to atlantic coast and north african as far as east as the island of sumatra and java 
So you can also find these island of Sumatra and Java. Between these two points, it runs across the Himalayan and the Mediterranean region. So this is the Himalayan and Mediterranean region. So this is the, the second part. So thank you so much for the watching. So if you like my videos, please you know share and subscribe your, your this channel for the more videos. So till then, take care of yourself. I will meet you with another video.